This is a LibriVox recording. Candide by Voltaire, Chapter Thirteen. How Candide was forced away from his fair Cunegonde and the old woman. The beautiful Cunegonde, having heard the old woman's history, paid her all the civilities due to a person of her rank and merit. She likewise accepted her proposal, and engaged all the passengers, one after the other, to relate their adventures, and then both she and Candide allowed that the old woman was in the right. "'It is a great pity,' said Candide, "'that the sage Pangloss was hanged, contrary to custom at an auto de fe. He would tell us most amazing things in regard to the physical and moral evils that overspread the earth and sea and I should be able, with due respect, to make a few objections. While each passenger was recounting his story, the ship made her way. They landed at Buenos Aires. Cunegonde, Captain Candide, and the old woman waited on the governor. Don Fernando de Barra y Figueroa y Mascarenas y Lampordos y Susa. This nobleman had a stateliness becoming a person who bore so many names. He spoke to men with so noble a disdain, carried his nose so loftily, raised his voice so unmercifully, assumed so imperious an air, and stalked with such intolerable pride that those who saluted him were strongly inclined to give him a good drubbing. Cunegonde appeared to him the most beautiful he had ever met. The first thing he did was to ask— whether she was not the captain's wife. The manner in which he asked the question alarmed Candide. He durst not say she was his wife, because indeed she was not. Neither durst he say she was his sister, because it was not so. And although this obliging lie had been formerly much in favour among the ancients, and although it could be useful to the moderns, his soul was too pure to betray the truth. "'Miss Cunegonde,' said he, "'is to do me the honour to marry me, and we beseech your excellency to deign to sanction our marriage.' Don Fernando de Barra y Figueroa y Mascarenas y Lampurdos y Susa, turning up his mustachios, smiled mockingly, and ordered Captain Candide to go and review his company. Candide obeyed, and the governor remained alone with Miss Cunegonde. He declared his passion, protesting he would marry her the next day in the face of the church, or otherwise, just as should be agreeable to herself. Cunegonde asked a quarter of an hour to consider of it, to consult the old woman, and to take her resolution. The old woman spoke thus to Cunegonde. "'Miss, you have seventy-two quarterings, and not a farthing.' It is now in your power to be wife to the greatest lord in South America, who has very beautiful mustachios. Is it for you to pique yourself upon inviolable fidelity? You have been ravished by Bulgarians. A Jew and an Inquisitor have enjoyed your favours. Misfortune gives sufficient excuse. I own that if I were in your place I should have no scruple in marrying the governor, and in making the fortune of Captain Candide. While the old woman spoke with all the prudence which age and experience gave, a small ship entered the port on board of which were an alcalde and his alguazils. And this was what had happened. As the old woman had shrewdly guessed, it was a grey friar who stole Cunegonde's money and jewels in the town of Badajos, when she and Candide were escaping. The friar wanted to sell some of the diamonds to a jeweller. The jeweller knew them to be the Grand Inquisitors. The friar, before he was hanged, confessed he had stolen them. He described the persons and the route they had taken. The flight of Cunegonde and Candide was already known. They were traced to Cadiz. A vessel was immediately sent in pursuit of them. The vessel was already in the port of Buenos Aires. The report spread that the alcalde was going to land, and that he was in pursuit of the murderers of my lord the Grand Inquisitor. The prudent old woman saw at once what was to be done. "'You cannot run away,' she said to Cunegonde, "'and you have nothing to fear, for it was not you that killed my lord. 
besides the governor who loves you will not suffer you to be ill-treated therefore stay she then ran immediately to candide fly said she or in an hour you will be burnt there was not a moment to lose but how could he part from cunegonde and where could he flee for shelter end chapter thirteen this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org candide by voltaire read by ted delorme in fort mill south carolina during january two thousand seven